Our world is a shared experience, fractured by individual perspectives, yours and mine. Imagine if we could all understand each other. When I first started my career in magic, I was doing a lot of performing in restaurants, table to table, card tricks, coin tricks, sleight of hand, and it, woo. <laughs> you got a good seat for this. And I, this one night, I was on fire. I remember it, I was fast and funny, my moves were perfect, I was unstoppable. And I sauntered up to this one, this one table, an elderly man and his wife, and I said, folks, would you like to see some magic? And the man looked at me and he said, sir, I would love to see some magic, but I can't. Unfortunately, I'm blind. And I looked at him, really looked at him for the first time, and it was so clear he was blind. He, his eyes were glazed, he wasn't really looking at me. Anybody would have known he was blind, but I, I was so wrapped up in my evening, so lost in my world, I, I wasn't looking at him. I just saw two generic people and I launched into my show. And I stood there, embarrassed, and that word was ringing in my ears, blind, 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 and I, I had no choice. I said, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I don't have anything I can do for you, but if you come back again sometime, I promise I'll have some sort of magic I can share with you. He said, I'll hold you to that, and I went on with my night. A few weeks later, they came back in. I recognized them immediately, and I panicked. I had completely forgotten about it. I raced back to the room where I kept my props, and I, I, I was thinking about every trick I'd ever learned, every book I'd ever read, something, anything I can do for this man. And then I, I remembered something obscure, an obscure idea, something I read a long time ago in an old manuscript. It's all I had. So I composed myself. I walked back out, and I said, hey, folks, my name is Brian. Would you like to see some magic? And he cut me off. He goes, all right, we're back. What do you got for me? With a big smile on his face. So I asked his wife, may I sit next to you? And she said, sure. So I, I sat down, and I said, Ed, his name was Ed. I said, Ed, do you trust your wife? He said, sometimes. <laughs> I said, will you trust her now? He said, sure. So I took out a pack of playing cards, gave them to her, and said, mix the cards, make sure there's no special markings on them. She said, no, they're fine. I, I took Ed's hand, and I said, I'm going to place a card in your hand. Do you think this is a red card or a black card? And he said, red. And he was right. I put the next card, and he said, red. He was right again. I put the next one, and he said, mm, black. Again, correct. His wife is getting skeptical at this point. And we keep going red, red, black, black, red. He's getting all of them right. Red, black, red, faster, black, 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 red through the whole deck, black, black, red. Every single one of them right at the end of it is laughing. He's howling. The whole restaurant is staring at us. And I turn, and his wife, his wife is weeping, tears of joy. It was the most beautiful magic I had ever experienced. And a little bit later, I'm going to tell you how we did it. But the real secret of the trick, the real secret of magic, is understanding and taking on different perspectives, different points of view. You see, magicians have a unique dilemma. The magician is the only person who cannot see the magic, because I know how the trick works. And that knowledge of the secret is a limiting perspective. So the magician must wholly and completely take on the point of view of the audience. We do this night after night, no matter who's out there, in order to create illusions. This is a technique called perspective taking. Perspective taking is the ability to see the world from the point of view of another person. It sounds simple in theory, but in practice it can be incredibly difficult to do. For instance, have you guys played around with one of these before? Aha, uh -huh. a few of you look excited. Most of you look angry just because I'm holding one. I, can feel, I feel flashbacks to childhood. Some of you started twitching when I took one out. I love the Rubik's Cube. They're actually easier to solve than you think they are. Uh, take the stickers off, rearrange them, put them back in the right order. Yes, break the pieces apart, put it back together. I actually learned how to do this, and then I realized if you spin it really fast, it looks like it solves itself. <laughs> now... So what just happened there? Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> kind of a delayed response. Everybody just... <laughs> so what just happened there? Well, I know that if I come out, mix up a Rubik's Cube, toss it in the air, and it comes down solved, you're all going to think I'm a jerk. <laughs> or at the very least, a show off. And I don't want you to feel like that. I want you to enjoy the experience of magic. So I make a few jokes. 
take the stickers off, rearrange it, break the pieces apart. When I do that, you go, oh, I did that, my friends. We smashed it with a hammer. We threw it at a wall. We... When, you, when that happens, you feel like I understand you. And when you feel understood, we make a connection. And then I can do the trick. And we can all enjoy the magic in that shared space. So now you know what perspective taking is. It's the ability to see the world from the point of view of another person. And you know why magicians do it, to create illusions and connect with the audience. But why should you care? Well, it turns out this technique has drastically improved my life off stage, outside of magic, in more ways than I could have ever imagined. I'll explain. I never had trouble meeting new people, making friends, getting into relationships, but I always struggled to maintain them. Eventually, the communication would break down, people would leave, and I would be alone. And it took a long time to admit it, but it was my fault, or at least mostly my fault. The people in my life didn't feel like I was invested in them. Now, that wasn't true, but it doesn't matter. It's not enough to care about somebody. It's not enough to understand them. They have to feel understood. They have to feel cared about. And I wasn't doing that. And then I took this technique I had honed on stage and I started using it outside of magic and I realized I could make better, more meaningful connections with people. I met friends, incredible friends that have lasted years. I, I met a beautiful, fiercely intelligent woman, the love of my life, and I held on to that relationship. We're actually engaged to be married. Oh, thank you. <laughs> She'll be happy to hear that. <laughs> None of that would have been possible before. So of course the question then becomes how. How do you do it? How do you do perspective taking? Well, first you need to understand the difference between uh, visual perspective and emotional perspective. Magicians traditionally deal with visual perspective. We need to know literally what the trick looks like to the audience. So we practice in front of mirrors, we film ourselves and watch it back, but relationships are primarily about emotional perspective. How is somebody feeling about our interaction? It seems like a difficult thing to do, to get to know someone's emotional perspective, but let's get back to Ed, Ed and his wife. The relevant question for Ed was, what would magic feel like to someone who is blind? I didn't want Ed to feel tricked. That was important to me. I don't know, but I have to imagine if you're blind, you could be tricked by anybody at any time. So I didn't want Ed to feel tricked. I wanted him to feel magic. I wanted him to be magical. And his wife, this woman who spends her life looking out for him, I wanted her to see him in that light and for them to share in that experience together. So if you want to get to know someone's emotional perspective, one of the simplest ways to do it, ask. Ask questions. Too often we're afraid to ask people questions because we feel like it will be rude or somehow they won't want to answer. But we underestimate people's willingness to answer our questions. Before the trick, I asked Ed, have you always been blind? He said yes. To me, that was crucial, relevant information. It seems that a person who has never been able to see will have a different perspective from somebody who had their sight and then lost it to accident or to illness. With Ed, I can't even use the language of sight. So by asking questions, I can adjust my tone, my demeanor, even my language, so that he feels understood and we can make a connection. Now. If you're going to learn this, it's important not simply to ask questions, but to listen to the answers and listen to understand. Don't just listen to respond or to reply. You've heard it before. This is where I went wrong most in my life, I think. You've heard it before, and we're all guilty of it from time to time, but too often we listen to people only with the intention of coming up with something clever to say. So as soon as their lips stop moving, we can jump in and say our thing. We've all done it, we're all guilty of it, but I did this especially badly, and I think to the detriment of my relationships. Have you ever asked for somebody's name and instantly forgotten what it was? You know why we forget people's names? Because while they're telling us their name, we're thinking about how we're gonna say ours. First name, last name, Mr. Miller, Brian, put out your hand. We're not listening. We're on our end of the conversation only. So you can start to learn this technique. Ask questions, listen to understand the answers. When you do that, I think you'll find you can make better, more meaningful connections with people, personally and professionally. It drastically improved my life, and I really believe it can improve yours. So, Ed. How did Ed, a blind man, see the cards? The answer, as in most great magic, was actually very simple. I sat across from him, 
and underneath the table, I placed my foot gently on top of his. And then I gave him these instructions. I said, if you think the card is a red card, and I pushed my foot down on his once, then you say red. If you think it's a black card, and I pushed my foot down on his twice, then you say black. I was teaching Ed a secret system of communication where I would let him know what color the card was by the foot taps, once for red, twice for black. And I repeated the instructions. If you think it's a red card, say red. If you think it's a black card, say black. And then I squeezed his hand gently and I asked, do you understand? And he smiled and he said, yes, I understand. And I knew then that we had connected. When it was all said and done, I taught his wife how we did it, like I just taught you, so they could go do it for their friends and family. And Ed was so excited, he couldn't wait to see his grandkids that weekend so he could, quote, freak them out completely. <laughs> see, magic isn't about the technical skill. Magic isn't about a trick or even the secret. Magic is about connecting. Life is about connecting, and connecting is about taking on other points of view. You see, our world is a shared experience, fractured by individual perspectives. Imagine if we could all feel understood. <laughs>